Here we are at uh, Ocean Rodeo slash Alula. I'm here with Greg Falk, uh, manager of research and development with this exciting new material uh, that Alula de develops. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so um, it started when Richard was talking to a chemist friend of his who is wishing to remain anonymous, complaining about we were kind of reaching this limit with kites. Like we felt like um, not only Ocean Rodeo, or he, he felt like not only Ocean Rodeo, but a lot of kite brands in the market, they've, they've got to a point where they're just really happy with kite performance. They're making all these little tweaks to try to make things better. So the next breakthrough had to be through materials. So, and the chemist was actually working on something um, on his own. And it basically was given Richard this idea of, of incorporating these into kites, which at the same time for us as a Lula gives us a really great testing ground because kites are a demanding application for our material, like for any material really. If you think about what's going on inside the leading edge, blasted with UV, blasted with sand, rocks, salt water, fresh water, like all these hydrolysis issues. And then to match that, unlike a backpack or a tent, you put that thing under pressure. So if you look at the hoop stress that's on the seams of that kite at 10 PSI for a, a leading edge, that's a lot. That's, that seam is being torn apart. You wouldn't have that kind of stress with a tent unless you're like pulling that fly super tight. Even with wind loads, you don't get anything like that. So, so for us as a Lula, partnering with Ocean Rodeo to develop this. It's basically been a great way for us to get our get that unofficial testing, um, seeing what's happening to our fabrics as they kind of go out into the wild. Um, so we're getting, now we're working on getting more like the lab testing done to quantify, but the real life stuff has been a big benefit with matching with Ocean Rodeo there. Right. Yeah. And so Ocean Rodeo has been using this in their leading edge material for a few, couple years now and some prototypes. And yeah, we've had a few years tested. of prototypes. Yeah. And now we're going to check it out. It's, there's some here that we can ride. Um, so is this stuff stronger? Is it lighter? What's the big deal? So it's both stronger and lighter. So what I've got here, this is 65 grams per square meter Alula. And then this is the, this is actually a, a Dacron a kind of type of material, polyester. So this is the lightest stuff we could use in a kite that we found. So normally kite materials between 170 and 175 grams per square meter. I think this stuff is around 150. So, so 65 to 150, so it's still, it's almost double the, it's more than double. Yeah, close for the conventional stuff, it's almost a third of the weight. Oh wow. Um, yeah. And this stuff we're using it for our flight and some of the, uh, the wingtips for Ocean Rodeo's other kites. So what does that mean for uh, the weight of your kite? How much does it take up? So kite? compared to a conventional built kite, what they're when they're using the Alula material, they're getting about half the weight. So it's not just the material, I should say though. They're using our bladder technology as well. Okay, so, so that's Alula's also got not, not only uh, this this da uh, Dacron replacement, but it has bladder new bladders too. Yeah, we're experimenting with a few different types of. Uh, films, uh, composite films, to yeah. replace the bladder, yeah. Cool, so how, it can't be that much stronger than, can it? <laughs> yeah, so I think what you're getting at is this, uh, this is the kind of the famous test we've done where we've, uh, we've tested a, a strip of polyester material, which is conventionally our kites, which people have used these kites for years and they're really strong, but everybody knows once you get a rip in your kite, Nobody on the beach is gonna tell you, oh man, just keep kiting yeah, yeah, like that, like it's fine. Day. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you get a rip, that spells disaster, right? Yeah. So, and that's kind of what we're showing with this, the, the resistance to tearing for this material. Um, as well, the, what's difficult to show is this material has less stretch. So if I were to pull on this, even before it breaks, it's gonna really stretch. Right. Um, you can kind of feel it a little bit. It's hard to show on the video, yeah. but it does Maybe stretch. Yeah. Whereas if you pull on that, you just won't be able to stretch that with your hand, so it's a lot stiffer. Try right, like, grab here and here. Yeah, it's like, like, it just doesn't metal. stretch, yeah. So when we're doing the, uh, the tensile testing, so this material you take between two jaws and you'd pull it and it would stretch, 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 and then break. Whereas this, we're getting a lot less elongation and it breaks at a higher strength. Okay. Yeah, cool. so that's the key difference in strength. And then what I can demonstrate for you guys is the, uh, the tear resistance. Okay. So I've got this, which is just rigged up as 15 pounds. So I'm going to put it through both of these materials. And you can see it just tears through. 
And if you want to grab that, you can try tearing it, uh, like propagating that. <laughs> so this one is actually, and this one's even been loaded up already, it looks like, but I'll uh, throw this on. So that was 15 pounds? Yeah, okay. that's 15. And this is 52. We don't know anywhere to actually. Ideally, who would be able to walk This one, I think, is 30. And this guy is 88 pounds. Yeah, that table's starting to go. Look at that. Wow. So that's 200 pounds? <laughs> at least that, yeah. 15 to 200 pounds. <laughs> oh, you right? Cool. So that's it. It's going to take the whole... Um, it's going to take... Yeah, it's going to take the table off, so I'll unclip that. I'm not much of a counter. So, that's the new material. Leading edge is made out of it. So, what do you find, uh, Greg, the difference in the kite performance with, with the lighter? And then still standard lighter. It's also stiffer, I guess. So. Yeah. What are they finding uh, as far as you know, riding and stuff? So, for me at first, when I was brought onto this project, because I'm a, I'm a kiter as well, and I thought, how great is it going to be to be able to offer the suckers that weren't able to move out to the coast with me and stayed in Ontario because there we get that light wind yeah. so often there's so many days I was sitting on the beach where it's five six knots and you're just wishing for because even the bigger kites like as you know it's yeah. you really get a decrease lot, in performance with these 19 turns, meters 21 meters yeah, exactly. exactly so I thought that it was just going to be that light wind solution to get you a big kite for hydrofoiling that you can go in those really minimal winds um, and it does do that but what's most impressive is like you said is the increased performance to the stiffer airframe so okay. with our bladder material which is stiffer and then with the material as you've seen it's quite a bit stiffer it just makes the whole airframe responsive and now kind of when we're talking to the kite designer about this kind of stuff he talks about it like you never see an airplane high performance airplane with foam wings right everything's about stiffness responsiveness you don't want any slop in the system it's the same with foils too right the stiffer the foil the underneath the water the, the more performance they're getting yeah exactly you're not getting that delay so when you pull on the steering line for this kite the whole airframe is doing that instantaneous reaction and you can feel it like our, our pro rider who likes a really reactive kite, yeah. he's talking about down tuning our 10 meter to make it less responsive. responsive. Yeah, because it's just it's just so fast. Where that really comes in is the uh, the 14.5 flight and the 17 flight. Yeah. Is those kites handle like a nine or 10 meter, which sure. yeah, it's it's something else to to try. So you get more. Are you getting more power as well so because the kites are yeah. lighter, or, or are they finding it's just that they stay in the air? you know, in those lower wind thresholds. So I think there's there's a couple things. So everybody's got their opinion of it because it's such a different beast to fly. Okay. I don't think it's so much, this is my personal opinion, I don't think it's so much more power given a certain wind speed and while you're kiting at a certain speed, where I think it really comes in is on a hydrofoil or on a conventional board is getting yourself up and out of the water. So you can take time to set yourself up better because it's just floating there. You're not having to manage the kite as well. And then plus when you dive the kite, you get that rip out of the water. Whereas with a conventional, well, there's that. And then I find if you're, I usually kind of undersize my kite when I'm foiling because I don't like to be up and riding and fully out. But what happens with a conventional kite is you dive it and then you turn it up or loop it up and you get that slow climb where you kind of sink back into the water until it yeah. comes up and you can dive it again. Yeah. Whereas with the Alula kites, you dive it, you get that power stroke, and then on the upstroke, yeah. it climbs faster. So you're getting a bit of power on the upstroke and you dive it. So for foiling, that's where it's really been next level. It's allowed me to ride a kite that I can comfortably cruise around on the foil, yeah. whereas I'm not struggling as much to get up out of the water. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So were there any challenges in uh, putting this material and applying it into kite construction that you'd like to Lots of challenges, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So that would be the, um, 
myself as the manufacturing guy, I'd basically try to build a new material, yeah. and then they would say, hey, it's failing in this way, that way, so then we'd right. change the composition or change how we manufacture it, and say, how about this stuff? And then it would be like, well, this happens, this is better, but this is worse, so. So it took a, yeah. a bunch of tries before you got this right? Tried. So many tries, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. So what's exciting now is, is other applications. So yeah. my background is military, like we were discussing before, so yeah. there's potential for ballistics, for lightweight right. backpacks, for high performance mountaineering, climbing harnesses, all this kind of so stuff. So you guys have the proprietor patents on all this stuff, and uh, yeah. it's pretty cool. Is it being produced overseas, or is it here? Or? It's in Victoria, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we're doing it domestically. Go Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks for uh, showing that, showing us this amazing new product, and uh, look forward to seeing uh, how it revolutionizes the kite industry. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh